Okay, we're here today with um, Clint Robinson. Um, it's probably a bit more relaxed today because I've known Clint for a fair while. Uh, we go back many, many years. Um, so, um, 35, Simi. 35, 35 years. years. We used to yeah. live together on the Gold Coast. That's yeah. right, yeah, for a little while. Um, we were rooming and Clint was one week on, one week off on the Goldie in, in the apartment that I was in. So his mum used to make these fantastic dinners, <laughs> stews and that, and come down and it was, I loved it. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was good. It was yeah. good. So um, anyway, uh, Clint's back again for another Molokai. How many is it now? Um, well, I first came to Hawaii as a 15-year-old kid. My dad uh, sent me over and I'm, I met a fellow called um, Bob Toogood. And Bob picked me up at the airport and took care of me. And that was in 1989. So yeah, about 27 years ago I first came wow. here. But I've only done 11 races because my main focus was Olympic Games. So I only used to come here in the year after the Olympics when I was having a bit more fun. Yeah. Yep. And so, you, given your background is surf life saving and sprint kayaking, um, how did you go adjusting to doing marathons? Well, the reality of this race is um, my body type is purposely built for sprint racing. Um, yeah. To go flat out over three, three and a half minutes, and then to come here and do a race that's roughly three and a half hours is a very different body type. Yeah. Um, so I've basically trained for two and a half decades to be fast, not to be endurance fit. Um, so yeah, it's a very different thing. It's um, my body's definitely not cut out for it. So yeah. I just I like it when there's more runners and I can use the ocean and my speed and power and those types of things are a lot more fun for me. But um, you know, coming to Hawaii and enjoying some races and catching up with friends that's yeah. not too hard either. So um, it's tough, yeah, isn't it? no, no, I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of fitness, is uh, how is the fitness this year? Right? <laughs> well, I'm now uh, you know doing a fair, fair few things. I've been the head coach for a surf life saving club where I live. Um, I've done quite a lot of work with uh, Nudgee Rowing College, which is the, the, one of the best rowing colleges in Australia. Uh, I work with them quite a lot. So, um, you know, to get two paddles a week, I'm happy. That really satisfies yeah. my needs yeah. at the moment. But to say that I've got two paddles a week for any more than about six weeks, I'd be lying because I haven't got two paddles a week. No. So, so yeah, I, I keep generally pretty fit because I like to keep active and I'm doing yeah. a lot. My roles keep me busy. but. Um, at the end of the day, um, I'm mid 40s now, okay. and uh, I've been paddling for over 30 years, so I yep. have to have to get my priorities right. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Times change. <laughs> they do. Mate. They do. Yep. So, um, apart from trying to underrate the field by about 20 strokes a minute, yep. what are your expectations for the, the race this year? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I do tend to have a low rating. That's just due to you know a lot of technical efficiency yeah. through a lot of kayaking, as you know. It's a it's much more technical sport. Yeah. Um, so, look. I, I don't train enough to go out there and rate 80 to 90 what Hank can that do with yeah. small blades. Yeah. I don't like high stroke rate anyway. Um, so, you know, I just tend to enjoy the efficient efficiency of the sport, uh, working with the blades that I paddle with. I would say this race, my goals, firstly to finish. Um, mm. I don't believe you start any event and pull out. I've never been one to pull the pin. So um, that'll be my main focus, is to make sure I finish the race and hopefully keep a good level of pace across the channel. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to be a whole bunch of exciting stuff, but no. even if you are going for the win, it looks like it's just going to be a blood and gut slog. Yeah. So um, yeah. I don't know what it is, 12 years of nearly nothing. We've got a couple of years where it's been maybe 12, 13, 14 knots, but to get anything over 20 is just, you've got to go back 16 years to get yeah. that in this race. Yeah, it's absolutely. crazy. It's crazy. So you've won the race how many times? Is it two or three? Uh, won it four times. Four three, times. Three times uh, as me. a ski and yeah. one in an outrigger. Ah, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, eh? yeah. 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 So yeah, I've been here for a fair while. Okay, and what was your favourite race? You reckon? Uh, my favourite race was my first one when I was 15. Um, yeah. uh, interesting story about Oscar. Like, there's always a lot of interesting stories about <laughs> Oscar. Yeah. Um, we got to about two hours, and I was right beside him. Um, oh, and actually, I was that. a skinny young kid. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, and I was on a Hayden ski that we'd built for the race and uh, he came up beside me and he said, hey, what are you doing? And I said, uh, I mean, racing, you know? And he said, uh, you're going good. He said, I see you at the finish. And then he just <laughs> slowly started to move away towards the finish line. But um, I was on my way to Canada for the Junior Worlds as a first year junior yeah, in my yeah. first Australian team. So um, yeah, I stopped in Hawaii on the way and I sort of fell in love with the joint ever since then. But yeah, no, it's been great. No, it's a hard place to handle. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. and uh, have you had any, um, I guess in the time you've been here, you've had some good downwinders? Oh, unreal downwinders. The 1994 race was the all time. Really? It had to have been eight to 10 foot, and you dare not go left and drop down the face because you would have nose end over ended. Yeah. So it was seriously good runners. Um, Oscar and I and Dean Gardner had a ding dong battle. We were all within 100 metres coming around uh, Portlock. And uh, I think I finished second and Oscar won that that year or something. But um, look, I, I've, uh, I've had so many good downwinders before the race here. Yeah. And uh, 
even recently, you know, the last sort of six or eight years, there's been some great downwinds during the week, and then it just goes flat. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know what it is about race day, but um, every time you come to Hawaii and do downwinders, it's a pretty good day. Yeah, well, we've had fun all week. It yeah. hasn't been amazing downwinders. It's been, you know, 20 knot, 15, 20 knot downwinders, but it's fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. it is. It's a, I mean, it's beautiful water. It's warm. Yeah. It's, everyone's yeah. here for a good time. So, yeah, no, I mean, the race will get pretty serious. The boys yeah. will look into it, but um, rightfully so. Yeah. And you've had a lot to do with um, epic skis and that over the years. You've got a bit more of an involvement now in terms of design and, and stuff like that. Or yeah, input, look, what's, what's well, your input now? Well, out of all the athletes paddling epic, um, still today, I've probably been with them the longest. Yeah. Um, who are still actively racing. Um, I've now naturally got a fair bit more to do with what happens in the design of the elite craft. Yeah. So we've developed a surf life saving ski for Australian and international competition and also recreational use, um, which is very exciting because it should come out this, this year. Um, Greg and I have been working on that for quite some time from all my experience and all Greg's design experience. So that's been a big project. Um, I had a lot to do with this new V12 that came out. Yeah. Um, Greg and I did extensive testing in Australia. Then we did a lot of design work over the phone and then we came here to Hawaii after last year's race and did more yeah. testing. And effectively then that's the boat that has basically been unbeaten in any major competition ever since. So that was a great project. I've always believed the V12 was Epic's best previous yeah. boat, but it was just too sticky in the front. So um, the old V12 won Molokai five times with three different guys. So let's yeah. hope that the new one can do something okay. special too. Good, good. Now, yeah. um, now, just a question. In the old days, there was always, a, with, with the Hayden skis, mate, there was always a special Clint ski that no one got to paddle. <laughs> with the new Epics, will there be a special Clint ski that only Clint gets to use? Or? No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think so. I think um, if that person's going to get that, it'll be Greg who designs yeah, it, but yeah. he's the last one usually to get one out of all the elite guys. So, yeah. no, no, Greg's uh, very unselfish with that. Look, I effectively did design for Hayden skis for 20 years, yeah. and my ski was the prototype edition that I would get naturally to prototype before everyone else but then the next season everyone would get all parts of that design in the production model yeah so yeah I was always the guinea pig I was happy to be that and uh, so I've been designing skis for nearly 30 years and uh, it's been good to have a lot of success on those skis. yeah and you've done a lot of technique clinics over the years there'd be a lot of people here you've done clinics and that with well yeah I, I was looking around this weekend and there's probably not too many people that I haven't actually been out on the water with at some point but um, Look, I mean, helping people understand how they can get better stability. Um, yeah. And of course, stability breeds confidence. Confidence gets more power, and then you go faster from the byproducts of that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's an important part of this sport. And as you know, there's a lot of people here that haven't been paddling very long and don't know much about yeah. paddling. So, yeah. it's very important that they try and get those little bits of help, you know? And so, you know, we haven't covered a lot about your kayaks, but, you know, I'd, I'd, most people would know that you've won Olympic gold, silver, and bronze, and spent many, many, many years. How many? Four or five Olympics? Yeah, it was five games. Yeah, yeah. five games. And, you know, success and huge success in surf life saving and in ocean paddling. What's a tip that you could, you know, given that this sport is really about the intermediate guys and girls and the, you know, the people, the novice paddlers, yeah. what's a tip you could give them for? This race and in general, just in general. Yeah, look, I think paddling in general, you have to get your bum in the seat a lot. Yeah. There is no supplement. People think ergometers, the greatest canoeing nation in the world did a massive amount of research into paddling ability development. And that was the Germans who are by far in the history of paddle sports at the elite level, Germany decimate nearly everybody, yeah. even Hungary. And the reality of their situation was ergos do very little for boat feel. And if you don't have boat feel, you can't put power and you don't go fast. Yeah. So the reality of paddling, if you want to improve, is you've got to get out on the boat. Yep. And uh, whether it be flat water or whatever, you just need to improve your physical dynamics in the boat. So yep. yeah, boat time's key. Good, good. Yep. And any tips for the race? For the first time paddler or those who are looking at it thinking, geez, love to have a crack at this Molokai, I just don't know if I can do it. What's well, the key to this race is you've got to survive the distance. Yeah. So it's going to be a long race because there's not a lot of bump to run. And if you're not that good at running bumps, if they do come along, then you've got to pace yourself. So I usually try and break it down for all the people that I've trained that have been here. And every one of them have made the course that I've trained for this race, about 30 odd guys. So I would say take it in 10K blocks, pace yourself and make sure you have plenty enough nutrition to last the distance so you don't fall in a hole by being dehydrated. Yeah. That's the key, I think. Yeah, I've been sort of saying I've been working with a few first-time paddlers this year and just enjoy the first half, just go out and enjoy the yeah, water absolutely. and enjoy the scenery and then if you feel really good, 
start revving it up, you know, <laughs> up halfway. Uh, if you're feeling good after 30k, by all means. Yeah. You <laughs> if you're feeling good after 30k, you, you feel a unique as well. That's right, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks, mate. It was, that was great. My pleasure. No good worries. luck in the race. I'll need it. Thanks. <laughs>